All right, all right, everything looks good. Um, let me set up what we got. Everything should be set up, so we should be good to go. Um, let me fix this light really quick. I'll uh, we'll give it a few minutes for people to jump in. But planning on just hanging out for like an hour, maybe two, maybe two hours max. Um, and seeing what we got. Didn't uh, drop a video, so I figured we'd just do a live instead. I ha I'm going to have one tomorrow. Um, probably no live. And then we'll see about Thursday. Probably not. And then um, Sunday, usual live. You know, uh, kind of just same, you know, same old schedule, same old routine. So uh, I was looking at PIC. This is XL Fleet. Um, that's the one that I was just looking at uh, just now. They hit 1370 pre market today before coming down. $14 resistance right now. PIC I like. I have it in a long-term portfolio. I mean, I actually have a decent average under like 1050. So like I was buying it down here. I think I bought some back here and then I was buying some more down here. Um, they have a ton of partners, tons of, they actually have like some good numbers and stuff rather than a lot of these EV plays that don't have like any numbers. So um, that's, that's at least that. I see we have an LCA request. Let's talk about LCA. Oh shoot. I didn't even know LCA was up this much today. Well, look at that. So LCA broken out here. I I have it in my uh, longer term portfolio, but we're pushing up towards those uh, those highs in you know in the 19s. I mean, really, we had some wicks into the 19s, but like we're you know we have some since here around 18 dollars or so for LCA. Um, so we'll see. Uh, is the EV sector done? That's actually funny because I'm gonna probably make a video on that exact topic tomorrow. Um, we're gonna go over a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'm talking about the sector. I don't know. I mean. I, it's definitely it's not done. I think you're gonna see a lot of the 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 BS kind of get weeded out. So a lot of those companies, the penny stocks, and some of those stocks that are kind of like borderline EV, they either have weird looking cars, they have no sales, um, and like they just put out a press release saying that they're looking to you know like you you can kind of see through that. And so I'm gonna have a bunch of those stocks and, and talk about some of those I think tomorrow. Um, but that's that. So LCA looking really good. It's actually, you know, 18 bucks is going to be the next era. We pierced through 18, 19, hit 20. That's awesome. I mean, this is looking solid. Uh, I haven't even been paying attention to it because I just have it in a long term portfolio. Like I feel, you know, pretty confident on it. And I have an average, I think, somewhere in here. So, I mean, I'm, you know, looking great on LCA. So um, that's that. IDEX, this is, I have to say, I will, you know, I personally wasn't a big fan of IDEX um, back, you know, a while back, so I never took this trade, but I'll look at the daily chart here really quick to get a better sense. I mean, this is nuts, but this is the type of stuff that we're seeing, right? They have some EV ties, and so <clears throat> the stock really ran up. Um, I don't know if they had news or anything, but it really got going, and I personally, you know, I was someone who wasn't a huge fan, and it, it kept defying, right, what I thought was gonna happen, so. Um, Kudos to those, congrats to those who played it. I'm nothing against it. I just didn't, you know, I just personally was like, you know, I have other plays that I felt, you know, more confident in, but absolutely incredible run. Same with DPW because, I mean, I was in DPW, but I scaled most of my shares out before the massive run. Um, Pre-market on Monday, I was pretty much out. So like I had like no DPW left into the day. So, um, you know, I missed out on the big run, but I took my 30 plus 50%, whatever the number was, I took that and I, you know, I felt pretty confident on that, especially for a stock like DPW where like, you know, in the past, you know, um, you know, from what I saw, from what I've seen, you know, it seems like they're not, you know, they're not really, they're not your, you know, they're not your Apple, I'll tell you that. So, um, you know, a, a crazy run. So DPW, what did it do today? DPW and these stocks, as, as much as they come up, they come down pretty fast too. So today it was down 12%. I mean, it popped up pretty hard pre-market. It looks like a right at the beginning of the day before falling down um, the rest of the day. So it held up here around this five, around this six bucks. It's holding up for now, five seventy. We dropped to a low of five fifty. So that's kind of your support areas on DPW. But I mean, I would not be touching this thing. Let it come back down, and you know, you can play it when it comes back down. So that's that. Yeah, with IDEX, DPW, um, those are stocks that traditionally, if we were to look back at the daily chart. Um, what do we see? You know, this we see these spikes and then drops. Like, look at the next day. You don't generally see two days of a continuation pattern. So that's what you want to look to to the charts. Uh, for you know, for example, now DPW kind of defied you know what we have previously seen. Um, 
but you know on Monday. But you know we see today it came down pretty hard. So uh, I'm not surprised by any means that it did come down that hard. So that's kind of what you what you want to be watching out for, and especially um, like the, these types of stocks that run up massively like that. They almost always either have an offering right after, or they come down just as hard. You know, almost all the time. Um, IDEX, same type of thing. Not as much. IDEX is a little bit of a better chart because um, it's not really just spike and drop. They have like you know a couple months back. This is now June. Um, they popped up and held. A, you know, it was a couple of days of a, you know, more. It's like a week or two of run um, before coming back down. Now it did come down pretty hard. So just understand that. Look to these prior history. You know, past history. This thing can come down, and I, and I anticipate it to come. I'm not shorting it personally, but I mean, I know there's a lot of people who probably are shorting these types of stocks. So they'll come down pretty hard, or if not, you know, harder than it went up, um, you know, on the way up. So that's that. GP, oh yeah. So let's look at GP really quick. Green Power Motor um, pulled back today. So a lot of these stocks pulled back, you know, and that's fine. I mean, this stock ran up a big, uh, ran up huge. I mean, this thing was sitting here under ten dollars like two weeks ago, um, and it hit thirty-two. So, I mean, again, same type of thing. You know, what do they do, right? Th this is a company that has like buses, um, or like kind of like commercial vehicles, I believe. Like they're like school buses, I think primarily. Like they're you know electric school buses, right? Um, it's one of their like bigger known, well-known things. I think they had an order recently for a few school buses. Um, you know, I don't know. Take a step back. They didn't get a hundred or like you know a hundred unit order. It was like a three to five or something like that vehicle order. So, I mean, you know, you got to take a step back and think about some of these stocks at the end of the day. I mean, is it is this the next is this the next Neo Tesla whatever? No, not right now. Okay, the sector's hot, and so a lot of these things run up on anticipation of the future of the sector. Awesome, that's one thing. But again, I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing coming down and holding up really well. I think it may hold up right around this level. So see these highs right back here a couple months ago? Um, these are at least on the chart, right? That's what we see from the chart. We see this level right here, 23 bucks. That'll probably be an area that it was an area of resistance right here. We had a wick up and then we had to gap up on uh, Monday. On Friday, we came to 23. And then now today, it just so happened that our, you know, we hit lows of 23.32. So 23 is going to be a solid area for uh, GP. If it comes below that, then you want to start looking lower. At that point, I would be looking towards 20 and seeing if 20 can hold. Um, that's my that's my point. That's at least my thoughts on GP. But going off of that, FUV, RC Moto or whatever it is, yeah, FUV. They've done like two offerings now. So we actually were looking at this in some on some past streams. And so what do we find? Well, we had this awesome little channel. So it was like trading in this channel where we had a low end of the channel around 550 and we had a high end of the channel around like eight ish coming down towards like yeah about around eight bucks um and so we were in that kind of resistance towards eight support towards five you know and we were playing in that range for a while and then eventually we broke out on this is a couple this is last week uh, and then we kind of found support on top of that channel and then boom, popped to the upside. People started to find this stock. Not surprising, right? Not surprising. Uh, and, and then now they've dropped some offerings. So that's not a good, well, it's not necessarily a horrible thing, but it's not a good thing for the stock price. Usually, usually you see offerings, you know, you see the price come down. And so uh, I'm not surprised that we are seeing the price, you know, dropping on down as to where it is right now. But we did fall back to 13 bucks um, on Friday. Uh, after hitting highs here of 20, so that's that's crazy. Um, we came down to 13.50 today, bounced a little bit, so 13 is probably going to be your level on this guy. If we fall below that, then I would think 10 bucks. And if we fall below 10 bucks, then you want to look towards these highs right here, which is around eight or nine bucks that we kind of had as areas of resistance in the past. So if we do come down that far, that's what you know I'd be looking for. I don't know. FUV is 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 one that I think is decent. Um, I don't think it's um, it's not like your I think solo to be honest those vehicles are a little more not, I wouldn't say out there they're not ridiculously out there I just don't think they're as practical you know personally so I think FUV may have a good chance um, longevity wise solo I don't know personally I'm not a huge fan I understand why it ran up let's take a look at solo really quick I understand why it ran up um, but I mean, it's coming right back down. It fell through this kind of range we had, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Solo uh, back down to like seven, and then eventually down towards six, and then I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing under five in a couple of weeks. Not even, maybe, even honestly, next week wouldn't be surprised. Just personally, that's just my, you know, my thoughts. I don't know. 
we'll see what happens. Um, DPW took, I mean, the die. I think DPW is probably going to drop an offering. I think DPW is going right back down, personally. That's my thought. Think about the weed stocks. Let's take a look at the weed stocks. Um, so, yeah, I mean, DPW, IDEX are those types of stocks for me. Um, there you you take your quick pop and you get out. You don't mess around with those. Those are not stocks you hold many, you, you don't hold those for many overnight periods after they've run up to the degrees that they've run up. Those are stocks that you're fine, like for example, right? Let's just say like it was a solo example, like you're fine holding solo for a swing trade, holding this overnight as it's sitting here at 250 support. But are you really getting comfortable holding a large position in solo, you know, as it's up over 10 bucks after it was just 250 a few weeks back? That's where, you know, you're risking offerings, you're risking, you know, the overall sector drops one day and solo can come down hard. Like it came down 17% today alone, which, you know, if you have a large position, that's taking a pretty big hit. You don't want to be dealing with that. You want to be taking profits on the way up. All right, so um, looking at the weed sector right now, um, what do we see? Well, let's look at the fast. Let's look at the past five-day, five-minute chart to see uh, what we've had as of late. So we have SNDL is the one that's I'm watching. It's actually pushing up a little bit here after hours, where it pushed up a little bit. It's sitting here at 32.50, so it's up 8% after hours. There's just nothing crazy. We had a decent support here around 30 cents um, for SNDL. Massive run to like 50 cents here early this morning at 4 a.m. Um, and then it just came back down the rest of the day. I actually got myself caught up in some of this and some of this droppage, which I was not, uh, that's, that was my mistake for the week. Still actually green, I mean, still very, very green on the week. Um, so on the, on the account that I show here that we're going to be going over every Saturday here on the channel. So should be a, uh, you know, should be a green week as long as I don't mess this up the rest of the week, right? We have tomorrow, um, I think full day and then Friday is a half day. So or Friday, we, the market closes at uh, 1 PM Eastern. So and of course, no trading on Thursdays. Um, so SNDL up 8% here after hours. So we'll see. But what I want to look to is what I would, I mean, what I would be looking for personally here is CGC, Canopy Growth. This is kind of like, I would say, a better gauge for the sector. So I look at CGC for the weed sector, and we're coming up on a pretty decent area of resistance. So we had an area right here around that 26 to 27. Honestly, once we clear 29, then things can get really juicy for the weed sector as a whole, but we have a nice uptrend. We really started to reverse. I personally thought what I thought was going to happen was we were going to see CGC pull back closer to 20. So I thought it was going to come down closer to 20 and then maybe we'll see a further move on up. But CGC kind of did what SNDL, what ACB, Tilray, um, a lot of other ones, IGC, what they couldn't do today. So Look at today's chart. CGC, we had that move up yesterday. All that really was was it was talking about the transition team from Trump to Biden or whatever. So um, it really just essentially was it, it is like you know okay now we're getting it one more step closer to Biden taking over and then you know what does that mean? Democratic win, weed plays right. We're thinking of potential federal you know legalization. So that's kind of what got this stuff going again. It spiked things up here in the after hour session yesterday. Uh, and, but it, instead of what, what we saw with like, for example, SNDL, right? We had that pop and then just fell off the rest of the day, right? CGC popped, held up, came back a little bit here in the pre-market, but then eventually it popped back up, hit 27.70, then came, up, came back down, but then put in higher lows throughout the rest of the day. And it's still doing so here in after hours. So that's a good sign for the sector in general. Um, personally, um, SNDL is one that I actually, you know, I like for those more volatile runs. Um, Tilray and ACB are more, I would say, are a little bit, you know, they're not going to be as volatile. They're a little better for a slower move, uh, either up or down. Um, so they look decent. They kind of finished decently. They kind of pretty much mirrored towards the end of the day, at least, um, what, C what CGC did. Uh, SNDL didn't exactly do so. It kind of just fell off and held up around 30 cents. So that's kind of my level on SNDL. Under 30 cents, we'll probably come back down towards 25 cents if we do go under 30 cents, but we'll see. It's going to be interesting to see how CGC does the rest of kind of like the week um, or really, you know, tomorrow and then Friday. How does this do? Looks like it's starting to break out. So it, will this thing finally go? Will it finally run tons of volume today? So that was a good sign. So that's at least my take on a bunch of these guys, weed sector as of right now. So that's that for right now. Um, 
growth stocks with dividends. Uh, personally, for me, a, a great dividend stock, I like oh, a realty income is one that I love. It's it's a REIT, so real estate investment trust. Uh, the problem with, with, with a lot of REITs is that commercial real estate right now is a little shaky, right? Pandemic and, and a bunch of businesses going out of business, right? And stuff like that, especially with more shutdowns in certain cities um, as we go into the winter months, which we have some other, I have some other ideas and some plays to kind of, you know, to capitalize on that period. But at the same time, right? You know, these are not the perfect. These are not the best stocks. These are more. These are stocks that I would feel I would love to be going back into in the long term portfolio. Um, once we kind of make it out, vaccines more widely distributed, we get to probably next summer. Um, that stuff like that. So we we see a decent recovery here on O, but they pay a dividend monthly, and it's a, a nice, a solid dividend. So I like. Um, I like realty income a lot as a nice long-term, just solid dividend play, just compound that, you know, compound that investment, right? Yeah, so let me actually see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my customized layout really quick just because um, on the customized layout, I can see kind of like a little scanner here. I was looking at the bigger chart. I'll go back to the bigger chart in a second. Um, YG is running up big time. It's up 43%. Um, it's up 90% today. 43% after hours. So this is going to get into kind of what I'm looking at for next week or for the rest of the week um, and the near future. Um, WEI as well is one as well. Um, what are what do these stocks have in common? Well, they're generally lower float stocks. So there's less shares available to be traded, which means they can move. Uh, and they're China stocks. So this is this is the next kind of sector, I guess, we, are, we want to look at. So I have a couple of China low float stocks here on my list that I'll go through a few. And we'll talk about ones that I like that are towards the bottom. So let's see. So MFH, not necessarily a um, bottomed play. It kind of was a couple of days ago. It had a little spike today. I took, I was in from a while, from a little bit back. So I took some profits, but I'm still holding some personally further spike if more China names move. Reason why on MFH, if I go here really quick, I actually have it pulled up already. So MFH today, we will, we have a 53% short float which essentially just means that if we start breaking out over certain areas, which it looks like, at least this is the finviz.com chart. So take it with a grain of salt, but it looks like over three, we, we get over three and hold over three consistently, which we wicked above. We want to hold over that level. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. If we gap up tomorrow, that could be a bigger move. Um, but with MFH, you know, with that short float, what that could really contribute to is a lot of these spikes. So see these spikes to the upside? Quickly, you'll see shorts covering, which means they have to buy back their shares. When that happens, right, you get a pretty big, you know, we can get a pretty big short squeeze. Boom. You know, so that's that. Um, the other one, the other one that I would say off the top of my head that I like a lot is ATIF. Now, okay, it started to come up a little bit, but I think this is a solid gap that we'll get into. So I liked it. I was in it um, back here for this spike. So I made 15, 20%. Awesome. Whatever. It came right back down to this trend line right here, which I think we're going to be kind of, we're not going to touch again for a little bit. Who knows? They just had an offering, offering close, which is kind of a good sign. You know, that's out the way. You know, that's generally a good thing. You know, you don't want to be in before the offering. Offering closes, okay, now you can, you know, maybe look at looking at an entry. Um, so we had that. Now it's starting to move up today, up just slightly. Then it's up a little bit here, 2% um, here in the after hour session. So this is one that I think is a shot to one. And, and if it catches on and if it gets the crowd, it gets kind of the attention. This is one for sure that could go further than one. We just take a step back and we look to the past history of ATIF. Uh, a, a lower float China stock, right? Look at these spikes. I mean, we see the potential based on the charts. So this is a bottom now play. Your risk here is down to like 68 cents. So I wouldn't hold it down to 68 cents. But if you're looking at ATIF right now, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's honestly not a terrible, a, a terrible idea personally, right? I don't think it's a bad, in a bad spot. I, I personally have an average. Um, I didn't grab that much. I really missed out on getting an average under 70 cents again. Could have played it twice um, in the past, like, two weeks, right? But uh, I, I like where it's at. I think under 80 cents is honestly a pretty good spot. I think over 85 is the gap. So, you know, we got to really clear that 85 and get some more attention. I think we'll start getting that this week, um, if not potentially next week, as we see some more of these, you know, China plays um, really heating up. Let's see what else. AEHL is also a China play. This is formerly CCCL, three C's and an L. I always get this confused with CCL Carnival Cruise. It is not to be confused. So now they change the ticker to AEHL. They have some crypto ties, I believe blockchain as well. 
very hot sector right now. That stuff's getting very interesting. Um, so this is one that has some spikes in the past. So um, if China low float plays get going, well, here's one that I like as well. So let's just take a look at the float on this one. I don't actually know off the top of my head. So let's look at AEHL. This is on Finviz for those who are wondering. Um, so a decent floor towards two bucks. I wouldn't hold this thing under two bucks. I think it's going to be either it happens now a short term or it doesn't. Um, two million float. I mean that that's a low float. I mean un, you're under ten million. You, this thing these things will get found and they'll run. So I think uh, and one thing to also note is that if you're on Twitter, you're looking on Twitter, you're looking on stock twits. Type in some of these stocks and you'll start to see. Hey, is it getting attention? Is it being you know are you seeing a lot of you know vol, a higher volume of tweets? Are there some big accounts tweeting about it? If they are, and you start to see a spike, that's not a time to be getting in because your risk reward makes no sense. But if you're in and you're not seeing too much attention on one of these stocks, that's a, that's the time to be getting in. And then if someone finds it, boom, well then let them find it, let them run it up and you can sell into that spike. That's kind of the name of the game. There was a, a pretty dirty one today um, I saw on one of the uh, retail stocks, I wouldn't say it was a dirty one. I mean, the, the retail stocks are, are running up potentially, you know, not potentially because the anticipation of, um, you know, Black Friday makes some sense. But at the end of the day, is the retail, the sector right now that's super hot? Not really. Um, you know, what is a lot of, re a lot of companies are going under a lot of, you know, a lot of things are, a lot of people are going bankrupt, right? So is retail a place to be? Um, Probably not, but doesn't mean you can't trade the stocks based on what people are expecting, sympathies, and things like that. So, you know, it can get run up. But if someone with a big enough following tweets it, boom. I mean, that's you got to understand when it's a pump from a tweet or when it's something like that. So always, if you don't know, if you see no news, you're looking through filings, you have no idea what's going on. Look to Twitter, look to StockTwits, type in um, the ticker symbol and see if you can find you know somebody tweeting about it, seeing if they said some good things, how many followers they have. Okay, now it makes sense. That's why it's up. Let's, let's avoid getting caught at the top. You want to be looking to buy dips or you want to be looking to buy that before they tweet about it, obviously, or anticipating what they're going to be looking at next, if, if, if that, right? Because that, that's, that's legitimate, you know, that's a legitimate game here with a lot of these low floats. Um, okay, let's keep going down the list. Sorry. Um, FSR. I'll look at FSR really quick. That just stood out. I'll go through a bunch more though. Um, and those who are in here, we have a hundred people. Let's, let's let's smash the thumbs up. Let's smash the like button. Okay, FSR. I had this little downtrend here that I was putting in. We peaked above that, or actually, it was this morning. We we, we popped up this morning. Let's take a look at the five minute chart to see what happened with FSR. Also, I'll, I'll look at the one hour chart actually to get a better view. Um, so we peaked above that this morning, pre market hours, then eventually a little quick wick in the morning hours, then we fell back below. I think it's fine personally on FSR. I like it long term, but a breakout over this downtrend. So let's go back to the daily. A breakout over this downtrend and a confirmed move above. So holding above that downtrend, which we aren't doing as of right now, um, would signal a further move to the upside. Then we may be looking at highs. We may be looking at some new highs on FSR, which would be awesome. But I will say, I mean, I have an average from like I have like an average in the 11s because I bought it originally here, um, and then I think I had bought some here played this swing, and then I sold it in this account and then just bought it in a long-term portfolio. I started buying it here, then I bought some under 10, uh, and and it's been awesome since. So I'm up beautifully on it. I you know Is it a great buy right now? Okay, I mean, I recommend buying the red days, and if you believe in the company, you know, and it has a chance, it's in the, you know, the, the EV space, hot space, right? Uh, so, you know, you, you have that going for it. So I think it's a solid buy personally right now. Um, let me look at... <laughs> You want me? I'll show you the the stock that I was looking at that I was talking about. That was the retail stock that had a pump, um, and I'll show you what that is. Okay, so let's look at this. So it was Fran. Now I'm not nothing against people who call things out because you know that's they call things out. They give you a reason. They give the reasons why. But here it is. So look at Fran. Right, we close the day here at 3:43. Right. It's a retail stock. We look at the daily chart. It has a prior history of spikes. I've actually played Fran in the past. If we go back here and see this trend line, I played Fran like so many times off this trend line. Fran's done, you know, it's been very nice to me off this trend line for these nice bounces and spikes. But recently, right, Fran's down. And, and so, okay, retail plays. Let's see what happens. And then we get this after hours spike. Well, not spike. So all of a sudden the volume starts coming in. Right, pops it up here, immediately hits within minutes, within like five, 10 minutes, it hits 430. Pulls back to VWAP here at 385 and then runs to 520. So the problem here is that if you don't know what's going on, I just, you know, just so you guys understand, 
if you don't know what's going on and, and why this happened and you're like, what's going on? Should I buy it? Be very careful because there's probably people who bought it up here or just bought it up here over 450 who are now it's at four bucks and now you're down. And you're like, well, why isn't Fran going up? You know, if you're looking to get into Fran, the, the times to buy is now as it drops under four, you know, that would be a better time to buy if you think Fran will spike. Um, and if we just take a look at the chart, we get a spike to 520. So we take a step back. This is the, now this is the four hour chart. So we can see um, what's happening in pre-market hours. We can see after hours. You know, we have some resistance. It looks like we have to, we broke above some of these little highs, these little wicks, 450. But some of these wicks, 575, that'll probably be another area. This area right here where we had some support in the past around five bucks. So we'd have to get over five bucks and hold above that level, which we didn't seem to really do too well. Um, so that's, you know, that's, just that's one thing to just to watch, and there's an example on Fran. I think it's going to drop below um, four bucks here any second. I mean, uh, it's it's for those who get caught in it. It's a it's a learning experience to to see how this stuff works. Social media, that whole Twitter thing is is that's a legit way that people trade these days, and you just you know you can do fine without you know getting caught in that stuff. You just have to know what's going on. That's all. Um, okay, let me go back through some of these other tickers. Okay, um, super cheap stocks that are almost like a gamble. So, okay, I mean like penny stocks, right? That's that's what we want to look at. Want to look at the penny stocks. So um, that's what I mean. Generally, I, that's what I trade. Now, it's not necessarily it's a gamble. If you know how to if you know how to manage your risk with a lot of these stocks, it's not a gamble. It's it's putting yourself in you know a higher reward than your risk. And putting yourself in that situation more than more you know more often than not, and you can do well. So let's go back to some more China stocks. I think a lot of these China stocks are going to start running. Um, let's just take a look at some of these that I haven't been looking at too much. NCTY already kind of popped. I would like to see it come back down, hold support in the low threes. That would be a better spot for uh, NCTY. Um, I talked about AEHL, AIHS one two. It just spiked, so AIHS. I wouldn't. I would not like that until it comes closer to one dollar. My personal preference there. BI actually BIMI. This one I didn't even I wasn't even paying attention. This is actually an interesting one that I'm looking at now because you know what? BIMI right here, we have some support developing, right? That we have these kind of hold these wicks down. Um, right here at around this 170. Okay, we have some wicks below, but around 170. And then our floor here is 150. So I can put another trend line or another horizontal line here at 150. So, okay, this is this is a perfect example of a stock. Now, I actually may look to take this one tomorrow, potentially, we'll see. Um, it fits that we are seeing some China stocks running on no news. We're seeing China low float stocks running on no news. And what we're also seeing is that we're seeing just rotation. So you have the EV sector running hard. Eventually things are gonna kind of shift away from the EV sector and they're gonna to go to something else. Is it gonna be weed? Maybe, weed's looking pretty good. We wanna to look to CGC. We'll look at that again um, in just a little bit here. Will CGC be the stock um, that kind of leads the pack and then brings up the other ones, ACB, so Aurora Cannabis, Tilray, SNDL, right? Do they follow? Um, what we see here with BIMI, if we go back to the past couple of days, so I'm looking up here at the volume. I know it's a little bit tough to see, but I'll look at the past couple of days. So we have a 200,000, 100,000, 500,000, 300,000, 600,000, 100,000. Uh, Monday, we had 700,000. Today, 500,000, okay? So our volume is under a million, right? Or, or in terms of shares traded every single day. So if BIMI doesn't really move too much in price, but all of a sudden tomorrow, we notice that, hey, BIMI had over a million shares traded today. That's interesting, but it's still being held back. What could that be an example of? Well, that could be like market makers holding a stock back, loading up before it ultimately runs, before they let it loose, as they say, right? As you say, uh, and then the thing starts running on up. So over two bucks, then the, the party gets started here with BIMI. And we look at the, the past spikes. I've played this one before in the past. It's not that it screwed me, but I, I played it in the past looking for more on this spike specifically because I was looking at this spike saying, hey, this is awesome. It's going to go to 12. Um, and it didn't really go. Um, so I was looking for more and didn't take profits when I should. So I didn't, I didn't, lose, I didn't get destroyed, but I could have done much better than I did. Um, I played it many times after that as well, and, and we really had a nice spike lately. So I think this one could be also one that people come for, um, that traders come for as a China low float play. Let's go back here and look at the float. So BIMI really quick. 
we have, okay, it's a five, it's about a six million float. So, I mean, that's not like a super, super, like two, two million float, like we saw with some other stocks. I know I don't have ad block on. I know don't, don't, uh, <laughs> don't uh, yell at me in the comments. Um, but this could get going. And you're, again, example of a risk reward here. So let's say I hold this thing below um, 170, right? Let's say I have a stop, a mental stop, if this thing closes below 170 or it holds below 170 for a couple of days. Okay, that's a 15 cent downside risk. What's my upside? Okay, I'm looking for over two bucks the party starts. Then we can look to some of these potential wicks at 250, 260, 270. So we're looking at almost a $1 potential upside. So we're looking at like a, a 50 plus cent potential upside with a 15 cent downside. Worst case scenario, if you really wanted to hold this thing to the downside and you could hold it down towards 150. Okay, so now you're talking about a 35 cent downside. Maybe you're looking for a bigger upside, so a dollar plus upside. That still fits a good risk reward criteria. So for me, this is a good bottomed out chart. You know, So I, I kind of like this guy. So that's one as well. Um, I'm up over 150% S if you owned it, would you sell? I mean, it depends. I I... Well, it depends. If, if you're looking for um, the tax benefit, and I think longevity-wise, you'll probably be okay. So if you want to hold this for over a year for the tax benefits, um, long-term capital gains, uh, then yeah. But I mean, if it will probably pull back. I mean, we saw this thing hit 42 and it pulled back a little bit today. Personally, for me, I'm taking profits. I mean, I would be personally taking profits on this stock um, 100%. Um, that's me. So I would take, if you like it long-term, maybe you take half off and then you just hold the rest and you're like, Hey, like what's my risk? So a perfect example of that is, 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 um, let's look a perfect example of that is Mara, M-A-R-A. Let's actually look at what Mara is doing. So this is a stock that correlates very well, um, with Bitcoin. So Bitcoin pushing up, the stock is pushed up. Look at this absolute awesome move. So what I actually have is I have an average of Mara right now at that's literally my average. But I had a bunch of shares and literally what I decided to do is, okay, I'm going to just leave 100 shares. So chances of Mara coming back down, well, so even if Mara comes back down towards that 250, right, which I don't think is going to happen, especially if Bitcoin breaks out over 20K. Um, if Mara comes down to that 250, let's say there's an offering or something crazy happens, right? Okay. So I break even on those 100 shares, but the shares prior to that, I made money on. I took profits on the way up. So I made money on the play, so I'm almost guaranteeing. Well, I'm, I'm guaranteeing that I'm making money on this trade, but now I'm letting 100 shares ride. Why do I I say that? Well, because I think if we do break out, I'm looking at the weekly chart now. So each of these candles is one week. If Bitcoin breaks over 20k, this will really ignite the party. I mean, look at what we have in terms of look at some of these spikes on the weekly chart. I mean, do I expect this stock to hit a range of 40 bucks? Absolutely not. But is $10 out of the question if Bitcoin gets closer to 20K, you know, let's say in the next month? Is 10 bucks out of the question? No, and that's a $500 gain additionally on top of what it's at right now. So, you know, that's why I'm going to be holding Mara with my last 100 shares. And that's an example of how, kind of, how you can kind of take that. So, you know, do your own risk assessment saying, hey, um, where am I looking at? You know, where's my average? You know, what am I looking at here in terms of profits? Let's take half, I'll take, let's. 90% off maybe, you know, and that's what you want to do. Let's take 90% off. I still believe in this play long-term. Like I believe in Mora. I believe it potentially has a shot towards 10 bucks if Bitcoin breaks out. Then that's what I, that's kind of how I'm doing it. So uh, I've solidified a win, which is awesome. And I'm letting the rest ride rather than just selling my the rest of my shares up now because I'm up like 100% on the, on the trade, right? I can sell my shares now. And then all of a sudden look back at Mara in a week when Bitcoin breaks out and go, oh, it's at 10. And be like, oh, I didn't get any of that move when I was in it. I had the thesis. The thesis was right. So that's just how, how I would say, you know, how I would look at it personally. Um, VVF or VFF. Sorry if I haven't gotten down. I'm going to get, I'm going to start moving down the list. So don't worry. Those who are jumping in now, make sure to hit the thumbs up button so we get more ideas jumping in. Um, so it should be, it should be a fun time. So, okay, let's look at the daily chart first. Um, and let's see. So this stock is running up Village Farms. Um, okay, so it's starting to run up big time. So it looks like we had, okay, so we, partially for me, if you're in, awesome. If you're not in, I mean, you, you're starting to get overextended here. Um, not that the RSI necessarily means anything, right? Not that it means that it has to come down, but we are overextended here on the RSI. Um, last time we got overextended, we did see a decent pullback. 
towards this 50 SMA, this blue line. So personally, I would like to see it come down a little bit, maybe towards eight bucks would be a better buy if I was looking to get in on this guy uh, and to ride this momentum back on up. Um, but it looks like it does have some um, resistance with some of these wicks and consolidation down, or I would say 10 bucks. We get over 10 bucks and hold over 10, that's your next, that's a good sign for the next leg up to the upside. So I like that. APHA. This one's starting to do a similar type of idea. We have a recovery where we're kind of coming off these lows, we're pushing up, and you know we're breaking out over these you know highs right here. So it's looking pretty good. The next level it looks like here. So we're at 693 here after hours. It looks like a 760 or 750 area um, is one to get above. And if we get above that, then towards 10 bucks. So those are the next kind of like I think resistance levels that we may be looking at um, with APHA. So it's got some decent um, some decent moves. Market is open tomorrow. It is now open Thursday. It is a half day Friday, so I believe it closes at 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm not sure about after hours on Friday, but I know at least the market, the regular market hours at least close 1 p.m. Eastern. I don't know about after hours though. Um, after hours usually are open until, um, uh, what's it called, until 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you have a broker that can trade them, like for example, I use Webull, which there's, a, and there's my shameless Webull plug of the day, right? Link down below to get four free stocks, um, but I use it. So I mean, it's 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 awesome and it's a free platform. So um, you can trade from 4 a.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. Eastern. So pre-market hours from 4 a.m. to 9:30 a.m. and then aftermarket hours from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. So you get access to all those hours. So you can you can trade as long as you go into your on your trade settings. You make sure you click extended hours. Yes, um, as long as you have that checked, the, the trades you know the orders will go through. If you're putting a limit order in here after hours, you can't do market orders, but you can do limit orders. Um, after hours. Um, LGVW. People are, lots of YouTubers are hyping the stock up. Um, let's take a look at this guy. Long view, right? LGVW. Yep, so it's long. Okay, well, <laughs> so there, there you go. It's popping up pretty big time. Okay, so it must be a spec, right? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I honestly don't know anything about it. I don't know anything much about this, about uh, long view. I'll, I'll take a look. Um, LGVW. Long view acquisition. Let's see if we can get any filing information. Um, okay, well, if you have any, if you have anything that you want to drop in the uh, chat about it, then I don't know much about it. So I uh, personally am not, a, you know. And the thing is, there's so many different stocks. Again, at the end of the day, that you can, that you know, people are going to find and stuff. So as much as everyone talks about like the pumpers and stuff, I think personally myself, when it comes to um, we're just in a different era in terms of you know how how stuff how information is is moved around how information gets out. So when someone you know makes a video, when somebody makes puts out an article, it's the same thing as like a short report, right? Somebody puts out it's a, you got to think about this too. You know people get all concerned about the people who you know pump stocks or go along and, and hype stocks up. Um, it's the same thing on the other side. You know when these companies put out short reports, right? They're they're going short. Then they're putting out the report, and the stock, you know, many times will come down, um, especially if they're well a bigger a bigger name, you know, company, right? That that puts out the reports that is you know trusted. Um, so it's the same thing going along, right? Information is going to get out there. People will present the information. The problem with this stuff is when you're talking low float stocks and you're talking Twitter and stock twits big followings. So people with fifty thousand plus followers on those platforms, they can really move stocks. And that's like a bigger pump. I mean, when you're talking about information like this, it's just people are communicating the information and then the more it gets out, the more attention, of course, is on the stock. So yeah, you'll see the stock pushing up, which is why we're seeing a pretty big extension here. I mean, I don't know um, enough about it to tell you what I think, but I think maybe 15 bucks is your new support. If that can't hold, look to see some of these gaps. Usually the gaps get filled. So these gaps on the daily chart that there's no... Um, Kind of history, there's no price action in between. Generally, those gaps could be like in between these gaps could be areas of support and resistance that we may come down to prior highs, prior lows. So, those things are, are something to watch as well. So, um, that's that. Um, CIDM, let's take a look at CIDM and FSR. I talked about before. Um, that one I like as just a long term play. So, I'm, I'm in that guy for the long haul. Okay, CIDM is interesting. Um, we look to the left, we see spikes, right? This actually looks pretty solid. Because what I also like, and what I've been noticing too, is that this is coming back into play. 
Um, well, we can draw in a, a trend line, so we can go off of these lows right here. Yeah, we, we cut a can. I'll, I'll fix that really quick. Let's just fix this. We, we you know, it's of course it's it's rough. It's not perfect. It's a general trend line that we have right there. But this 50 SMA right here, what we like to see, is, and what we also see a lot of the times, that when you're below that line, it's an area of resistance. So we had it as an area of resistance right here. Boom, we pop above it. Now we came back below came above, now it's gonna be an area of support. So it looks like 56 cents, 55 cents is a pretty nice solid support. I wouldn't wanna see this thing dropping below 50 cents. I wouldn't hold it below 50 cents. That's personally my just my plan. Of course, we have kind of a floor here at 45 cents. So really, if you're gonna hold it to 50, you may as well hold it to 45 and just add on dips. And then maybe you get a, you know get a, either a news pump or something like that to get yourself out for a nice profit. So it actually looks pretty good. Uh, I do like it. I like the 50 SMA bounce. That's generally been a pretty solid um, trading strategy for me in the past. It's worked pretty well for me. So uh, I can't complain about the old 50, F, uh, 50 SMA bounce. Okay, so um, let's see. And actually, we were talking about Fran earlier. Fran bounced off that four bucks. So Fran actually, let me pull that guy up again really quick. So we talked about kind of like, you know, that Twitter pump type of idea. Um, it hit four bucks and bounced. So generally, every whole dollar is a good area of support and resistance. So if you're looking to get into Fran, you know, maybe, you know, four bucks could have been a, a decent dip buy, right? Um, let's take a look at Roku. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, that's not Roku. <laughs> Roku is looking, let's take a look at the daily chart because that's what I like to do first. It's popping up. So, okay, yeah, so the Dow hit all-time highs today, right? So we had, you know, big time um, moves up. Um, on a lot of guys, on a lot of, you know, big, bigger name stocks moving up today. Tesla's up pretty big, you know. So Roku right now has support, it looks like, here to 218. That's what we had a line in there. This high right here, I would say 255 now is a good support, even this gap. Many times these gaps get filled, like I was saying before, right? So let's take a look at this gap. We have a gap here from this 267 to like 266. So maybe it comes down to 266 as support, but. We're at 273 here after hours. This is looking pretty good. Um, very, very solid. Another, another play, uh, I guess, same kind of sector, right? Streaming service is, is uh, Fubo. Take a look at Fubo lately. I mean, this thing's been on an absolute stair, uh, I mean, just absolute acceleration to the upside. Today it came back a little bit, um, but it's been moving up. I would think 25 bucks may hold up around that level. Um, crazy thing for Fubo for me, I was in Fubo at like nine bucks or like under 10 bucks. But I sold it at like 12 something, half, and then I sold the rest at like 15 because I was seeing this. And I was like, ah, it may come back down. And then, of course, it ran up. You know, I made a good amount of money on that. It was intending to be a longer term swing, but I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll just take my profits here. And, you know, no, I got no shame in taking profits. And I should have left some on because it's been absolutely insane. Uh -huh. Let's take a look. I'll keep on going down. Sorry if I'm not seeing. I'm I'm getting back down to the some of. The, um, okay, I missed a lot. Okay, <laughs> I have missed a lot. Okay, F. I mean FCEI was a beast. This thing is nuts because I was in this this guy where I played I played it a bunch of times back in here and then I got stopped out right here on this one when it fell to 158 for a day. Uh, and then it just was just on an absolute tear. I mean, this thing is up so much. Let it let it consolidate. Let it cool off. Let's find a consolidation. Let's find a new pattern that we can develop here um, from FCEO. That's my. That's what I would say um, personally. That's my take on it. So um, give it some time. It's if you're in it, I would be taking profits. I mean, there's no shame in taking profits. So let's be real. So that's my thoughts on FCEO. NAK is Mara by right now. I mean, Mara, to be honest, if you are a little more into some, if you're willing to take a little more risk, um, yeah, I would say it was a, a, a decent dip buy, personally. I think under five bucks probably is okay. I mean, like for me, like I was going over before, right? I have an average at 250. So I scaled out most of my shares. I'm leaving 100 shares just so that if, if this thing goes to 10 and I'm and I'm like, oh, I, I, I had, you know, I had shares and I'm gonna miss out, I'm gonna get the FOMO. To avoid the FOMO, I'm leaving 100 shares on. And if, if it somehow comes back down, bad news offering, who knows what happens. Worst case scenario, I, I'm probably going to still exit with a profit on those 100 shares. But even if those come to break even, which puts me back towards this trend line, I still made profits on the other shares that I had. So uh, I'm fine. I mean, that's how I'm, I'm, that's how I'm handling it. I think it has potential range to 10 if Bitcoin breaks out over 20K. 
we got to get Bitcoin to break out over 20K. Crypto mania, it just ensues, and then we go crazy. Mara, Riot, everything just starts running. Every stock that has any crypto tie, you'll see companies that are going to start putting out press releases that they're now in the crypto space. They're mining. I mean, I don't even know what, how, how that stuff works, to be honest, but they're going to start, you're going to start seeing random companies putting out press releases, kind of like you're seeing now. If they can add electric vehicle, hey, we're heavily investing or looking into the electric vehicle sector in the press release, you're going to see tons of companies doing that with Bitcoin breaking over 20K. If we get that, which I would, I would you know, anticipate, I think it's going to happen. Let's let's look at Bitcoin right now. Um, it's 19.2 right now, so it's it's close. It's really close. We look, we we step back and look at like a two-hour chart. I mean, this is just putting in higher low after higher low, stair stepping on up. Now we have a new consolidation here around 1900. I mean, 19,000. We hold over 19,000. I mean, we're just like. I mean, it's like so close for a quick little move over 20K, boom. But what I did say too is that you have a lot of people who bought Bitcoin, let's go to the weekly chart, who bought Bitcoin up here, right, around 20,000 at the highs, and they are breaking even now. So this is not a terrible time, right, for you to say, hey, I'm going to just cut myself for a loss or sell half my, half my Bitcoin, whatever. So you may see some sellers up here, which I would anticipate, right? It's an area of resistance. You're going to see some sellers anyway. So the question is, no, now what happens? Do we see the run? Let's also correlate this. So this actually happened. So we had a run, Bitcoin right here. These, these highs correlated to December. So this is the first week of December right here, second week, third week. So what I would think is that post Thanksgiving, if we don't break out this week specifically, uh, I think potentially post Thanksgiving, that's where you'll see your potential breakout. If we don't do it this week, that's where maybe next week we break over and then then things get crazy in, until the holiday, you know, until the winter holiday season, right? So that's the thoughts. And AKD, not a huge fan. I know people are talking potential buyout, this, that, the other thing. Not a huge fan. Um, I liked it under ten cents, honestly. Um, I liked it over ten cents as a nice support there. But personally, either it comes down to ten cents again as a potential balance opportunity, uh, or I'm just not. I'm just going to stay away. This could, this this has the signs that it could be a potential delisting kind of run. I don't know. I'm not going to get caught up in speculating on that. But that's my my potential thoughts, right? Um, let's take a look at WIMI. So this is this is this is this is one that we're setting up for the China low floats to start running. So this is up six percent today. Um, right, is this a China? Yeah, this is a China stock. So let's take a look at WIMI. It, it popped early and then came back down, but this is one that I think towards five bucks. We look at the daily chart. We have okay, so around six bucks would be a better entry. We're getting close. We were at six fifty. So if it comes down tomorrow towards that six fifty, let me get rid of this trend line because this is no longer valid. Stuff always changes, right? So we got to change this trend line. Let's draw this trend line in. Uh, I could probably do a better job. Well, that, that, that's fine. So if it, it, this, is, this, this is perfect right here. So 50 SMA bounce. So if it comes towards six, I would be you know looking to scoop something up for a, a bounce play, being careful, saying, hey, I'm not going to hold it you know much below this trend line or you know, below this 550 support level that we're seeing right there. So it's looking pretty good though. Um, I think on, on pullbacks for WIMI. Um, next week, I think, okay, so next week, so here's my thoughts on some plays, penny stocks for next week. I'll probably have more videos coming out this weekend and stuff like that. And we'll talk again in the, in the next live session on Sunday night um, about this. But here, no, not retail. We don't, re retail right now maybe is going to run into, into Friday. Um, where is it? Uh, food delivery. Here's my, okay, here's my take. So um, food delivery stocks may be what runs very hard post um, Thanksgiving. Why is that the case? Okay, so WTRH has a nice support here at 350, which if we look at the five-day, five-minute chart, we look at today, for example, why 351, two, three times and bounce. Now, we may open below if the market's down. Actually, um, futures are up and they are ripping right now. So um, that's a good sign right now. So it, it, this, these stocks may all bounce tomorrow. But again, this is this is kind of like this is a stock. These are stocks that I'm expecting with cases on the rise, these to pick up. It's kind of where you have to, we kind of know it's coming, but at the end of the day, we don't know the severity of it. Like we don't know how much they're going to spike, but I think with travel, with people for the holidays, I think it's inevitable. It's going to happen. And again, cases are on the rise anyway, right? So uh, I think this is going to be, these are the plays. Now, just because WTRH, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter that 
WTRH may not be, you know, exactly affected by, you know, this food delivery kind of craze, right? Or by, you know, a restaurants, no more outdoor dining or no more indoor dining, right? Um, it may not be directly affected, but it's the idea here that matters. And so that's what I'm liking WTRH for. So I think it's one to be adding on dips on top of WTRH. I like Rave, R-A-V-E. It's coming down. Today was a nice dip. If you can get, if Rave does dip the rest of the week towards 70 cents, that could be an ideal spot to be grabbing some very strong support around 65 cents grill g-r-i-l is coming down close to my trend line so i like two bucks to hold if two bucks can hold that's great it's right around 210 here it's 213 after hours it closed at 210 this could be one to be loading up i may actually start accumulating this one tomorrow um, pixie is another one it's at 250 uh it has room down to two but i mean this, look at this chart it has a lot of range it has some prior history of spikes this is one I think management is also, they know what they're doing. When I say that they know what they're doing, they know um, kind of the craze. They kind of know what stocks are starting to kind of pick up and heat up. Uh, and so they would, you know, they would, it would be a timely opportunity for them to drop a press release on, let's say, Monday, right? Next Monday, next week saying, hey, you know, we're, you know, really partnering up or we're really working, working hard to, as restaurants close, to deliver food, something like that in their press release, right? You know, along those lines, boom, the stock's going to spike. Guaranteed, it will, because traders are going to love that. They already kind of know, hey, that's coming, right? Let's get someone to confirm it. Boom, that could set off the rest of them. And then you'll see stocks like WTRH, Grill, Rave, Blue Apron even, running on up. Blue Apron, also look at this little trend line that we have here developing. So it's it's coming back. Today was up actually. Uh, after hours we're at seven. I think under seven bucks is a better buy for Blue Apron personally. Um, but again, this is one that ran a lot, you know, back in the beginning of the pandemic, this ran. So these are some stocks that I'm watching um, around then as well. Also, online, online education plays. So we look to Zoom. I still have some Zoom shares that I'm writing up. Probably gonna sell those on Friday. They have earnings on the 30th, I believe. So that's coming up. Um, BOXL, let's see what happened today. I think it started going, okay, BOXL is coming. It's, it's, it's in a pretty good spot. Under 150, I think is okay. These are online education related stocks. Um, AMST has ties there as well. I like that one. AVCT as well, I like as well. We kind of broke out of this little channel and now we're showing some decent support here. So we broke up, kind of came back down, tested this top line of this channel that we were in as support, which is actually a really good sign. So I, I wish I actually added this today. Now that I'm looking at it here at the end of the day, um, this is looking really good. I like this one a lot, actually. Um, so there's that, and then there's AMBO. Ooh, this one, this chart looks beautiful. Let's look at the daily chart here and show you. Why do I say, it? look at this. We look to the left, prior spikes. This thing gets spikes all the time. And we have an uptrending support here. I would not be holding this thing below the support. So I wouldn't be holding it below two bucks, um, which makes it very easy. I know my, you know my idea behind the trade going in. That's it. So I like it. I like AMBO a lot right there. So that's that. Um, let me let me just scroll down through. I talked about a bunch of these. Sorry if I miss some of these things, some of these stocks. I see a couple SPCEs. Let's take a look at SPCE. Virgin Galactic. So this has got to get above 25. It's coming up to 25. This is actually looking pretty good. It gets above 25, which we're in after hours. We are above 25. Then we got to test this level right here. So 27 is our next kind of area. So we've got to clear that level. I like this one, honestly, as a longer term swing too, um, or just a longer term investment buy and hold type of, of strategy. Um, right now, I personally wouldn't be buying. I'd be buying if it does dip down below towards maybe 20 bucks. That's the time that I would be looking to buy this guy. It's got some range. I think it can certainly go up, and I like it for the long haul personally. Um, PLTR, this one's also solid. Oh, this thing is ripping lately, up 13% today. I mean, at some point, it's going to slow down. Maybe 25 bucks is that level of resistance that we see. So, I mean, let it, let it, when you're in, if you're in, that's fine. If you're looking to buy, I mean, if you're looking to buy this thing, I'd be looking to day trade it on breakout patterns and stuff intraday, not necessarily. Um, broad scale, hey, I'm going to buy this for a nice long hold swing. I mean, maybe it's, it's a longer term investment um, and you start buying small shares and look to average down if it dips, but um, it's up a lot. So it's it's getting very, it's overextended to be honest. So I think it's going to pull back at some point, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe it just keeps going. Um, we'll see. Um, SUNW, FCEL, I think they're going to have to pull back. I think Solo is going to pull, I think Solo is going to come back down. I think it, I wouldn't be surprised to see Solo back towards five bucks very soon. And NDM, I'm going to check on that one um, because this guy, 
Back to five bucks. So, okay, it was down today. It's It had the offering popped up, down. I mean, it's getting back up there. I think this is a, a decent dip buy. I think buying this one on red days is fine. Uh, ideally, if it can come back towards this trend line, which would get us back down towards four-ish, that would be a better buy personally, but I think this is actually a good a good long-term play. Um, I may make a video, or I'm probably gonna have a video at some point in December about some of my top, penny stocks that at least I'm watching or you know either looking at for more longer term plays into like next year uh, maybe some short term maybe some long term a little bit of a mix of both so I'll, I'll probably be talking about NNDM in that video so that, there's a kind of a precursor some some of the stuff that I'm initially looking at right now so spy so right now spy okay we're pushing up here after hours so that's looking really good um, if we take a step back all-time highs here on SPY were 366.77 in pre-market, I believe. So we might have a shot at all-time highs on SPY tomorrow. So there you go. DPW, I think it's going to come back down. COCP, I believe there's some buy ratings on it as well. Um, uh, I'll look at it really quick. COCP, a lot today. So personally, it may keep going, and I made that mistake with IDEX. Uh, it may certainly keep going, but personally for me, I would be holding myself a little back on this one. Um, I don't know. You know, it, COCP a lot. It's actually a stock that I think it's one of the stocks I made the most money on like in this account, in my Weeble account. Um, it was getting rejected by this 50 SMA that it ripped through today. So I would look for it to come back down towards like one. If it can come back down support around $1, that's a good spot, I think, for COCP. So if it can come back down, let's see. Um, ENG is one as well. It's been running up. Let's take a look at that. Let me actually really quick see if I can get any any news really quick here. Let's see. Um, yeah, the weed stocks are starting to run. So I'll look at that next. They're actually they're not running. They're looking they're looking indecent. Um, they're pushing up a little bit here in after hours. So ENG is probably one that I would just. I mean, it hit four thirty two from under a dollar. Uh, I would let it come back down. Maybe it finds some support here around 250. We have this kind of area right here. So look for 250 to hold. If it can't hold, it may come back down towards like these highs, 150, and then potentially towards $1, 125, $1. But those are some better spots, I would think, um, in terms of the buy-in. Now, let's look at some of these weed uh, weed stocks. So, so what we look for, what I like to look for for weed plays, let's look at the five, let's look at the five minute chart. I like to look at CGC, canopy growth, as just a gauge for the sector. This thing breaking above, holding above $27 is a good sign. This thing gets over 30, this thing could really, you know, this could really ignite the sector. So this is pushing up. ACB is, you know, kind of making a little bit of a turn here to the upside. Tilray is still kind of just slowly grinding up. So they're kind of very, they're very similar to CGC, right? SNDL is the only different one. It's up 6% here. Um, it's just didn't it didn't perfectly correlate, but it's another one that I think is good too. Uh, IGC is kind of a, I guess a similar play to SNDL in terms of a similar chart setup. YCBD is another kind of um, play as well for that sector. So uh, HEXO as well. These are some other stocks I think the sector is getting hot. I, what we're seeing right now is so we have the EV sector. Now we're seeing we're seeing some random China stocks running up. So low float China right now is getting hot. We'll see what happens. We saw some retail action today. The problem is that we don't have like we had the EV sector and that was hot. It was EVs. It was battery. It was charging. That stuff was hot and it was like okay we know what's happening. Now we're seeing a rotation to something else and it's going to be you know what's going to present itself as the sector. Is it going to be a combination? Is it gonna be kind of weed plays? Is it gonna be China? Is it gonna be Bitcoin? I think there's all, all those have some merit for sure. So they're all kind of in play, I think, personally. So CGC now up 2% here after hours, SNDL pushing up towards 8% uh, after hours. So we'll see how these, these guys do uh, into tomorrow. I think SNDL has support around 30 cents and if it falls below that, 25 cents. Um, let me look, we got huge, let me look at huge really quick. Um, really quick, I'll look at that. Huge. I forget what I saw, this thing, does it have ties? I forget what it has ties to, but it was something that I didn't expect. Huge looks pretty good actually. So we have a solid bottom here around 130. Oh yeah, I was. Looking, I think I was, 
I was looking at this one today, but I didn't take a position. It has a solid bottom here at 130, and it's pushing up. So now it's got to pop back to 175 as resistance. So this looks pretty good. We have some good buying volume today. This can get a nice continuation. Um, so I like that. I kind of like I like huge right now. Um, sorry if I'm missing a bunch. I'm going to keep going down, and I'm going to just, if I see something quick, I'm going to like mention it, and then I'll get towards the bottom, and I'll kind of reset in terms of where I am in the chat. So if I miss you, uh, I will hopefully get it. Um, HCAC, Canoe I like. I like Canoe a lot. Um, we'll look at the chart. I haven't looked at the chart in a while, actually, in this guy, I feel like. Um, let's see. Okay, so it came back today. We saw a bunch of stocks pulling back. Um, Pick, PIC, uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of EV plays pulled back a little bit. So I'm not surprised. Let's look over to the EV sector that I have, the EV list. Um, Tesla was up beautifully today, but the rest seemed to be down. So all these were down. LI, were, LI was up. X, Xpeng was down. Neo down. Ride was down. Okay, so HCAC. I like Canoe's technology. I like it. The cars are a little weird, um, their designs, but I don't think that's a problem. I think it's actually kind of cool. Um, so let's see what happens. If it comes back down, I think towards this 10, 90, 11 buck, I mean, this is, this is a good spot. I, personally, I don't think this is a bad buy. I think it's a good buy this level or less. I mean, honestly, even you can probably even buy it higher up. I don't think it's bad. Under 12 is honestly great. Um, I don't think I have, I don't think I have HCIC, but I, I, if I don't have it, I, it's something that I'm definitely highly considering in the long-term portfolio. But again, long-term, not necessarily something that I'm, I'm really concerned about scalping or playing short-term. It's probably going to be a long-term play. Oh yeah, HMHC is another great one for um, online education plays. So let's take a look at this guy. Sorry if I'm getting to these like late, but we're looking at it. So this one's got some, it has some range, but I think it got back over this 370, 375. It's got some range back up towards five bucks. So this is one to watch for sure. We can probably put in something here. Let's see if we can put some, eh, not perfect, but we have, you know, a worst case scenario floor down towards this two bucks, I would say. I don't know if, it'll, if I would want to hold it down that low. I would say we have a, a decent little cross here, the uh, 50 SMA crossing over this 200 SMA bullish sign, bullish day up 14%. So um, this could help ignite the sector as well. So personally, something I would, not that I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it, but it's probably not my favorite setup chart-wise. I would like to get, you know, I would have liked to buy, get in a little bit lower if I could have. Uh, maybe down towards, you know, under three would have been an ideal spot for me. But I have other ones at least that I'm in for now. So um, let's see. Two million air travelers already. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, we know what's going to happen. I mean, I think we know we know what's going to happen. It's going to be how bad. Like, is it, you know, how bad? Do we really see cases flying? Like, you know, and to what degree, you know? So that's going to be the question to watch, or the, the thing to watch, I would say. Um, Mara's pushing up here. Is Bitcoin pushing up here? Let's see. Bitcoin is, is, is not really pushing up right now, but it's up. So Mara's pushing back above five, right? Let's see. Yeah, Mars back about five, five oh six. Okay, that's after hours at least. This is one of those that I'm just holding 100 shares for the for the for the fun for the ride. Um, interesting though today how it did kind of pull back, and I think we saw a lot of profit takers here. So we had a really crazy run to the sixes, um, into the sixes, which is nuts from like the twos a couple days back. Um, and then it pulled back and it fell down to 427, but it's back over five. I think five bucks is a pretty good home um, for Mara, to be honest. I think it should stay over five unless they have an offering or some crazy stuff happens. See what goes down with that. Did you buy H O H O F V? I'm telling you right now, this is actually a solid play. I think H O F V. I mean, look at this stock right here. Okay. This stock, right? It bottomed out. They had an offering. So, you know, they had an offering. What are you going to do? You know, but look at this. It's uptrending right off the bat. It literally had the offering and it's like a bottom uptrend. I mean, I wanted to get in. I mean, I, I like this one as a potential recovery, longer term potential, you know, big time play. Um, it's got some range. They drop a press release. This thing will go. If not, this thing definitely has range back to like 175. So it's got a couple, you know, a good decent chunk percentage wise that you can take this. I think it's it's fine. I think, you know, solid support at $1. It's not, I don't think it's going to go below $1. I don't even know if it's going to go back below 125 personally, unless the market is, you know, super red or something. But I like this one. Um, I was thinking about getting it in the swing account. Um, I'm going to eventually probably buy some in a longer term um, swing account and just, you know, hold it for the ride here. I think we got a, a good shot. 
Um, let's see. Let's keep going down the list. HCAC. We just went over that guy. OPTT. I think OPTT is got, it may it may have a little more actually. Up forty percent today, and uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch it now. It popped over these highs, so it's probably a time that I would be like, I'm gonna be good. I'm chilling here. I, I wouldn't be touching it now personally myself. Um, I'd be buying it down towards the fifty SMA or probably down towards its two fifty. Two fifty is probably a better spot I would think for OPTT. AYRO, not a big fan. I think it'll come back down. Um, sorry if I missed some stuff. CGC, we just we just talked about that really quick. I'll just pull that guy up again. Um, it's not really a penny stock, but it's it's looking solid. So here's the daily chart for CGC. So it's got to pop over this level that I we've, we've had some resistance here on our last weed spike. So we break over that, then this is looking really strong. And then I'm liking this. You know, I'm liking the weed sector in general if that does happen. So I think we, we, we I kind of had the thesis there, right, with the weed sector as a, in general. We had the spike, right, uh, after the election. Okay. Then what happened was we kind of saw a little bit of a pullback, and we saw some solid supports. We saw we had an offering on ACB, you know, not surprised, whatever. It's going to do what they're going to do. Uh, and then now, right, um, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing a little bit of an uptick uh, in the sector again as we're getting closer to Biden taking office, what does that really mean? Maybe people are thinking, you know, federal legalization is, you know, more likely, looking potentially more and more likely. Um, so that's, you know, I thought maybe it would happen in December, January time time frame, but it's ha maybe it's happening now. And so um, and that, that's that's fine. You know, it's let it do it, it, let it do what it's going to do, right? <laughs> At the end of the day, um, I'll pull up Riot and Mara really quick. So let's actually I didn't I haven't looked at where is my Bitcoin place. Mara is up after hours here a um, little bit. Riot's also up, so they're push, pushing up. But they hit, so Riot is looking pretty good um, for a shot, a better shot towards 10. So if I have to obviously pick, you know, what's my favorite, my, my, which one has a higher chance to hit 10? Probably Riot. But you, you need to have Bitcoin break over, um, Bitcoin's got to break over 20K. So if Bitcoin does it, and it may just consolidate a little bit. Look at Bitcoin right now. Let's take a look here and look at the you know one hour chart. You know we're putting in you know higher lows. We're kind of up you know, but we may consolidate for a couple of days. I wouldn't be surprised if it does. And if if that happens, well then you're probably going to see a further pullback on Riot and Mara. So that could be your dip if you know you really are confident in Bitcoin breaking 20k. Now Bitcoin doesn't break 20k. Just understand your risk there. Um, so just, you know, that's, that's at least that. So I, I like it. I'm writing a hundred shares of Mara. That's just in this account that I, that I show you guys here. Uh, I'm writing a hundred shares of Mara. So that's that. Uh, let's look at zoom because this is, here's my little kind of trend. Look at the four hour chart. I think I did it on the four hour chart. That's where I actually drew the lines. So it's a little bit off in the daily chart, but there it is. So zoom, I've seen the bottom of this, but it's not, you know, perfect. It's, it's not, you know, it's, 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 an, it's pretty much in line. Putting in higher lows, Zoom. I'm going to be selling by Friday personally. I'm not going to be looking to hold through earnings. I think it could still get back over 500, especially with good earnings. But I'm not going to hold through that. Um, it was just a play that I thought that had some opportunities for dip buys after virus news, because at the end of the day, people are still using Zoom, and it's not that you know everyone's going back to work in school. If anything, you're you're seeing more work places, more schools being shut down, or, and people saying, hey. You can't come back here, you know, at least for the near future. So that's that. CIIC as one that I believe up again today, um, or at least it was based on where it closed yesterday, but it hit highs of 33. They're going to pull back. They're going to pull back at some point. I'm not playing them. I wouldn't be touching them up here personally. Let them pull back and look for it to buy on a pullback or buy on a consolidation. Develop a new support. Hey, it's not dropping below, let's say, 25 bucks for CIIC. For CIIC. There you go. That's a better buy, personally. Um, LCA. Let's take a look at LCA. LCA, we look at, I think, at the way beginning of the stream, and it's up beautifully today. So LCA is looking really good. Um, it's broken out of this kind of resistance that we had right here at this 1530. And so the next area that I'm looking at personally for LCA is like this 18, this consolidation here that we had in this 18 level. We got to bust through that. We bust through that and then things are looking really good. Um, as for LCA hitting 20 bucks, I think. 
Um, initially, when I was back in LCA back here, I was looking for 20 bucks, didn't actually get it, and was like, okay, we're gonna get it, and then boom, we fell through. So, but then I bought it back here, and I'm like, hey, it's fine. <laughs> it's what it is, it is what it is. Um, let's take a look, EV batteries. Um, let's see, let's see. Kern is also a good weed play as well. Let's take a look at the chart for Kern to see how it is shaping on up. Yeah, we had a little pop, of course, yesterday after hours. So I think what we're gonna start to see in the weed sector in general, I think we're gonna start to see higher lows being put in on a bunch of these stocks. And so that's at least my thesis on a lot of these weed plays. So let's see if we can continue to see higher lows. So what is that gonna mean? Well, let's see if Kern maybe holds up around 350. If Kern holds up around 350, then there's your, you know, your higher low. It dipped a little bit today below, but if it can hold up generally, uh, then that's that, you know, so we'll see. That's that's the thoughts. Carnival Cruise, let's take a look. I mean, with the vaccine news, right, um, you know, it's a good sign. So Carnival's pushing up. Market was on fire. So we got, you know, good signs for Carnival. Things are looking up. I think this is a, still a stock that you'll probably be able to get, I think, maybe further dips if there's any blips along the way in the vaccine process. Oh, it's going to be difficult to get it to, you know, mass, you know, mass vaccinations by you know whatever x date so you know that could be an opportunity for dip buys but if you're someone playing carnival i would be playing carnival or swinging this one into the summer months and potentially beyond so it's a long-term swing um betting on the recovery betting on things getting back to normal in the relatively near future when i said that i mean a couple months six months maybe eight months down the line i mean you know, who knows exactly how long it takes but that's at least the thoughts the EV is going to come back. I think we are seeing a clear shift from EVs to other sectors. We're seeing China stocks running up. Let me check what's going up after hours. So YJ is still the biggest after hours gainer. We have WEI is also a nice one after hours. JFU. What do these have in common? They're China stocks. So um, Fran was also one that got a pretty nasty pump. Um, but uh, Fran's not a China stock. But um, the, the ones before, they're China stocks. So we're starting to see it looks like, you know, China plays are, are heating up. So that's, you know, that's the next sector it looks like as of right now. I don't, I, not that EV is going away. I'm still bullish on it long term. But I mean, we saw some ridiculous moves. I think it's time for a healthy pullback. You know, and that's, let it, let it happen. That's, that's fine. Be ready to buy the dips. Don't get caught in offering, you know, trying to get caught in offering, trying to get caught on, on, on massive you know, pull downs because it happens and it's a, it's a good op it's a good opportunity to learn because a lot of people bought solo at you know let's look at solo and it's fine it's, it's a good opportunity to learn as long as you didn't blow your entire account that's the name of the game it's preserve the capital it's not necessarily it's preserve the capital as long as you can to sustain the game to get to the point where you can now you know you have more confidence you know people bought solo over 12 bucks and they're still holding it like hey is it going to go up I think it's just looking like we're headed down. We're probably gonna head down closer to five bucks. We're probably gonna drop below six in the very near future, I think, on solo. Uh, if I had to take a position in solo, it would be short. It would not be long at this point, but I, I don't really uh, short. YJ had news. Yeah, so okay, well the news, I think it's all you need is one stock in a sector to have news and then that ignites a sector. So um, it looks like that's what's happening. Um, let's see. Um, Rig. Let's take a look at Rig. We had a bunch of like Oilers running a little bit today. Um, I don't know what is what is Rig. Let's see here. The Rig is running up, but I I wouldn't. This is up a lot. So uh, personally, it's not a not a good thing for me. For me, this thing hit two fifty ish area. That would be like okay, either it's going to go to three and I'm going to take my profits, or uh, that's that's that. So now it's back to two bucks on uh, on rigs maybe it holds two bucks if it doesn't hold two bucks then i would look for it to come down maybe towards this 125 level uh, i know it's kind of you know it's it's fairly low from where it's at right now but i just personally think it's you know look at these look at how overextended it went straight up it's going to come back it just it, it, look at the history right it, it does it before it's done it before so that's what you also got to look at you got to look at past history look at dpw look at idex um no wonder right those stocks are coming back down. Look at their history. They have history of spikes, pops, and drops. Now, a lot of the history is based off of, hey, they, they run it up, they drop an offering, boom, you know? So just don't get caught. I would just be careful and, and be careful of offerings for stocks that 
or really running up big time, companies are going to look to take advantage of this opportunity of the tension on that. So um, that's that. Never buy, yeah, pre-market, yeah, pre, yeah, pre-market. Okay, the time you buy pre-market is if you're playing a news runner. So if something has a fresh press release, that's okay, maybe. And even that is, of course, if you don't know what you're doing, don't just buy blindly. But you generally don't want to be buying pre-market. Generally, if you're going to be selling, it's it's probably pre-market because that's when things are a little bit more elevated um, and you can probably you know get a better deal. Usually what you'll see is if, if you're in a bunch of plays, um, you're, you know, you'll see like your account is like super high, um, pre-market or whatever. And then all of a sudden the market opens and it's like, wait, what happened? Everything just dropped, you know, it pulls, everything pulls back a little bit. And you know, you'll, you'll see generally with a lot of penny plays, especially, um, you get a quick market pull, uh, market open pullback, but let's see MVIS microvision looking like it's, uh, let's take a look at the daily chart. It's getting up there, so it's got some, this area was cons a nice consolidation area right here at this 250, 250 is the next level it looks like. It's gotta get above 250 for MVIS. Uh, but it has some spikes, it has some range, so it can definitely get three to potentially 350 it looks like, um, for sure. Um, let's see, uh, tomorrow I'm looking at a bunch of China plays, so personally for me, I wouldn't be surprised to see um, let's see, where's CHNR? Let's, okay, that one's coming up. That one's looking, I'm not in that one, but it's looking decent. Um, MFH, I'm looking to see if we get a continuation move. If not, you know, it's probably a, a good reload back down here towards as close to two as you can get it. Uh, and then ATIF had some momentum. It's looking decent. It has a little momentum after hour. Well, it has a little bit of after hours action. So uh, we hit uh, 81 in after hours. So uh, ATIF over 85 cents, we can get close to one. I think $1 is probably going to happen on ATIF at some point, um, especially if China stocks really get going. This would also be a timely day for them to drop a new press release. They love to drop press releases. They dropped one a couple days back last week. Wouldn't be surprised to see an ATIF press release tomorrow morning or Friday morning or next week, next Monday. Wouldn't be surprised. Um, day trade tomorrow tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, uh, the pullback today was, I think, a great opportunity. I mean, for those who caught that pullback, that was awesome because I mean, you had a dip down to like 427, which is honestly great. HYLN. For those who are jumping in now, if you guys would not mind hitting the thumbs up button so we get more ideas flowing in the chat. That's a good thing. So HYLN is struggling right here uh, at this 20, in the 26 range. It's really got a break above that 26, 27. So it came back down um, today. So HYLN is like trying to put in higher highs, higher lows, which is a good sign. It's, it's making a nice reversal off this 18 that we fell to, um, but it's looking like it's trying to put in higher lows. So, okay, the question is, do we push up? If the sector kind of comes down, HYLN hasn't experienced that kind of explosive move that we've seen across a lot of the EV sector. So HYLN has some, has some time. I think this is fine for the long haul. I'm in it long term. Uh, so that's that. I have a decent average, I think, down in. Uh, no, actually, I don't. I actually started to uh, buy up in here. Um, so, like in the 25 range. So, I might be like around break even. I don't think I bought this dip, which I, looking back, I should have. So, we'll see what happens. OPTT, I think it probably will pull back personally. Sun Power. Let's look at Sun W, S U N W. Sun Works, I know. Sun Works is one that people are talking about. It came up to this 850 ish area. Got it to eight, I ah, and it's pulling back. So let this thing pull back. We may be seeing some support here around this five bucks. I would look for five bucks to hold on SUNW. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, let's see, MP, MP. Let's take a look at this thing is pushing up 18% today. So, so right now we have some. We had this level right here at the 16. There's this gap here, so depending on what happens tomorrow, we may fill this gap back to the downside, so I wouldn't be surprised if we come down towards 20 or even 19. That wouldn't be a terrible spot. It's up a little bit, so let it, I would be looking for a pullback, personally. That's just my thoughts. Um, LCA is looking good, right? Let's take a look at LCA. LCA is pushing up. It was up beautifully today, so we are, those who are in it long haul um, for the long term, you know, and those who are in it, those are, you know, they're looking good. Feeling good. So LCA, beautiful breakout kind of above this area of resistance around this 1530. Was an area in the past, we had a, a little wick right there. We had a wick right here. We had a few tops right here, double top, came down.
bounce off 50 SMA, boom. That's one thing I've been noticing too. The 50 SMA bounce is back. So that's something that I love as a trade for penny stocks, for really any stocks, honestly. But you see this blue line, the MA50. So it's the 50 SMA, simple moving average, or the MA50, uh, 50 MA, you'll hear it a couple different ways. That is a line on the daily chart. So you wanna be looking at the, the, the daily chart where each of the candles is one day. You'll see that lately, it's been doing now, not every stock respects it the same way, but lately, a lot of stocks have been bouncing nicely off that 50 SNA, and we saw it perfectly here with LCA. Look at SNDL, not that uh, I wanna keep talking about SNDL, but look at this, You know, it did, it did the same thing. It had a beautiful 50 SNA bounce, well, not perfect, but it had a 50 SMA bounce. You know, 50 SMA for SNDL is sitting here in the low, you know, around 23 cents. So it came down to 23 cents a couple days back last week, popped right back up, came back down, popped again. So it's holding up as solid support. Um, so that's that. Um, PLTR is up there a lot. I don't think it's going to probably pull back, but I don't know. I'm, I wouldn't be looking for entries now. If you're in it, you're in it. Um, if you're not, you either go small or wait for pullbacks to start loading up. Um, let's take a look. Uh, LPCN, Padufa, the 30th. Let's take a look at LPCN. Uh, ADMP got me, did me dirty. So uh, <laughs> may not be doing too many Padufa plays uh, for the near future. I don't know. We'll see. This one, this one may be running, though, the next couple of days. It may get a couple percent move, so at, at a minimum, especially if, if we get the approval. So... That's one to watch for sure. So this thing is coming up to this one. Yeah, that seems to be an area of resistance above that 160. Things get a little bit, you know, less less heavy. We might start pushing up to the upside. So it looks, looks like it's a pretty good spot, honestly, um, for a, a potential breakout move. So that's that. Um, let's see. I don't. That's one that like it's just I don't. I, I wish I could tell you, you know, what's going to happen with that one. I personally don't like the look of it because it's up a lot. Not that it's that, that's not a bad thing, but it's just up a lot. So like, let it come back. Buy on buy on a red day, right? If you're looking to get in, buy on a red. Day. Wait for a red day. Buy it then. It's up 13%. Don't buy it now. Wait, wait for it to pull back. That's my my uh, my thoughts. HUFV. I think this is actually setting up for. So right now, my thoughts on HUFV is that this could be a great play next year like 2021, right? But personally, my thoughts on HOFV is right now, it's a great penny stock to trade because we have history of these spikes. If we get news, it runs. We had an offering. We have a beautiful uptrend developing here. We have a floor of about one buck. I don't think it's gonna go below $1. I mean, we have some room, this little gap right here towards this 175. I think we got room at least to that level. It might go further. So. This is a, a, a good stock. I like it as a penny stock now, just to kind of recycle, you know, getting in on the dips, buying at support, selling into pops, selling into press releases, selling into news. Boom, it's the same cycle, rinse and repeat. It may have some potential longer term as well. So, you know, it's one that I'll be, it's on my radar. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not in right now, actually, uh, but I should be, uh, personally, I should be. Um, but, you know, it's a good one to just recycle in and out. You know, you can you can make a lot of money on that, just up and down. You know, playing it left and right. Seriously. Um, N E E. I personally don't like I D X. I don't like that um, at all. So here's your 50 S M A bounce right here. So here's your support. 74 bucks is your support. So I wouldn't want to see it drop below. It could, but uh, I like this one for the long haul too. This is a good, but it may be making a little bounce here at that 50 S M A which is sitting right below where it's at. It may not hit it perfectly. It may dip below further, but I think it's in a good spot, personally. Um, SNDL has a massive spike history. 30, you want to buy? Yeah, oh, I, I actually am in SNDL <laughs> because, I mean, I, I, that's one that I'm actually in. Let's look at the Wii plays. Uh, up, so it, it closed at 30. Um, it, it could come, I think it could come down, honestly, to 23 cents for that 50 SMA balance, potentially, but it may just make a recovery from here. I hope it does, because I'm in. I would. I mean, I'm fine with adding. I have no problem adding to my position. I'll just if, if it dips, I'll just buy more, um, and just play it as a longer, a little bit of a longer term swing, and, and get out on a spike if I need to get out. I don't want to hold this one um, too far into December, um, at least for right now. I think they have potential delist, so I, I I'd be careful with that. I got to look a little bit further into that one before I um, dive deeper in it. But um, CGC continuing to push new highs here in after hours, so CGC. 
getting a little interesting. CGC is leading the pack for the over. Generally, CGC goes up. You'll see ACB up. You'll see SNDO. You'll see TL, uh, TLRY, Tilray, uh, HEXO, HEXO. So that's something to watch. You know, does does this China kind of pump, you know, action that we're seeing, a lot of these China stocks running up, does that have any merit? Do we just see the sector shift from electric vehicles to weed? It just may happen where we go hard wheat because we had a spike. I think we'll see more, but will you know will it happen now or will it be in a little bit a little bit later? So, you know, that's that. Uh, FTEK, let's take a look at that. Okay, so fuel tech. This one's up a lot, I think, right? Yeah, it's, it's up a lot. Let, it, let me give it some time, man. I mean, I don't know. It's It hit 704. It came down. It's going to be super volatile. So I would recommend that you can day trade this guy. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't be buying it for a swing here. Let it come back down. Maybe there's some support here around three bucks. A better spot. Personally, that's what I would be looking at. Um, let's see. Uh, QLGN is one that is kind of a lame play. What's going to happen with QLGN is the second that you exit it, it's going to go. Um, so it hit lows here of 316. Um, we can get rid of this really quick. This is more clutter on the chart. Yeah, we had solid support at this 360-ish area. We fell through. Stinks. What are you going to do? But this low threes, I want to see hold. Personally, I think that if they get the approval for their COVID antibody test, which from their press releases, it, it I have done well on this one. Just basically reading off, reading their past press releases seeing what's going anticipating right anticipating what's going to happen next so this one it's just they're waiting they're waiting for the approval so it could happen at you know who knows when and so if all of a sudden it happens and like that's the day that you sold or you're not in you know that's just going to be like that's just going to be your luck right that's what's gonna, probably going to happen so um the longer time goes on to the end of the year the more interesting that i will be in qlg um same thing as adtx the thing with ADTX is that they're waiting for the same type of thing, um, FDA uh, emergency youth authorization, right? So same thing with them is that like this is, it's holding up a lot better though for ADTX and I feel a lot more confident in this one based on their last press release. If you haven't seen that or their last two, um, go back and check it out because that's actually setting the stage for this being approved and for them going, you know, full go into next year on their test kits and stuff. So I like it personally. Um, holding grill over, yeah, I like grill. Um, grill over the holiday, yes, that's a solid play, I think. Let's look at grill really quick. Why so? Well, we have this little trend line right here, I think down towards two bucks, as close to two bucks as you can get it, if you can get under two, honestly, that's probably even better. Um, but food delivery plays, I think we're gonna see spikes in cases in the next couple of weeks, big time after the holiday. And then that's gonna be, hey, more restaurant, what does that mean? Just in general, Food delivery stocks like to run when we see restaurants shutting down, when we see states shutting down. Just what you'll see, you'll see spikes. All, you, you notice that when LA um, shut down, when they have, when the New York kind of shut down, when they, when they talk about um, when Cuomo comes on TV or whatever and he starts talking, everyone's like, uh-oh, and, and you see the, the, the food delivery stocks start spiking. Is he gonna shut it down? Or are they, what are they gonna do? What's he gonna do, right? So you see that kind of happening. So I think we'll, we'll see you know, um, more shutdowns, more of that stuff equates to you know more food delivery plays running um appreciate you guys all tuning in if you wouldn't mind smashing the thumbs up button we're over 100 likes awesome i really appreciate it i think our record on any stream is 125 so if we can beat that live while, while we're watching that'd be awesome <clears throat> um if you guys have ideas make sure to drop the ticker symbol in the in the chat so i can quickly lo uh, look um at the ticker so that's that um focusing on swing plays. So when it comes to, yeah, I'm mostly focusing on swings. I, I'll day trade here and there, but um, generally it's the swings that I like. The thing that I like though, is that if you are someone who has um, an account under 25K, which the account that we're, you know, I, I use here that I've been growing on the channel, um, that we hope to hit 100K by September of next year. So we're at 18-ish right now. Um, so I have changed that to a cash account just so that if I'm ever in something, I can get out. You know, uh, gotta be careful of good faith violations. That's the only thing to worry about, but that's, you know, um, the PDT rule is really, really restricting on especially people who all are, find themselves in a stock that's up a lot. And they're like, well, what do I do? I can't sell or, oh, I wanna take a day trade, you know, um, 
but I don't want to waste the day. It's like I, I, you know, it's like, it really messes with you. Like, it, so I don't, I don't like that. It really messes with the mental aspect of things. So I wreck cash account as soon as you can, if you can. Uh, and so yeah, I generally will. So I, I swing trade, but if it ends up being a day trade, I'm fine with just taking the day trade. Like I, you know, that's that's just it. So if I if I like something in the morning, and all of a sudden in the afternoon it runs, or it runs, you know, uh, in power hour, or it runs like after market hours. Great, you know, I take my profits. I don't have to worry about you know day trades and stuff like that. Um, so that's that. Um, VVPR. Let's take a look at VVPR, baby. This is one that I was in. Um, this is thin, I think. This this guy is pretty thin, or it's IPWR is thin too. I forget. That's that. Um, this is oh well. Here you go. Here's your 50 SMA bounce though. So does it happen? 850. Uh, VDPR, if it bounces off 850 and goes back to 10 plus, you know, I think this has a lot of range potentially, um, then there you go. But that 50 SMA, the question is, can that hold? If it doesn't hold, we have some room back down towards like seven bucks, six bucks, even, you know, under six, potentially some strong support there for VDPR. So buy on red days is, is a good idea, I think. But that 50 SMA bounce could be a, a, a nice play. CCO. So, okay, this thing is running up. Um, we have, let's see, we have strong, we have a resistance here at 150. We have a 175-ish area. So those are some areas of, we're breaking out over that 150, so it looks like 175-ish is the level to be watching. Really quick, while we are talking, taking a look, I wanna take a look at this, MARA is running on up. So here we go. Mara is, well, maybe it's up to 521. So, okay, so from the ads, you could have had a dip buy here today of 427. I mean, you're up like a dollar in like, you know, a couple hours. That's an awesome play. Um, 18, thought I was going to get better. Gather for Thanksgiving, big mistake. History's going to repeat. Uh, I think that's going to happen. I think so. I, you know, it's just going to be how bad does it look, right? So how bad does it get? and what restrictions are put in place post, you know, uh, holiday period, or post Thanksgiving, potentially for the next holiday period. Um, Best Buy is actually looking like it's a solid, solid little guy right here, look at that. So it looks like this could be a good dip buy today, right here at that, uh, at that, at that trend line. So we have higher lows being put in if it continues to do so, dip buy. If it comes down, you're gonna be looking at 110-ish, as a better support level. If it comes down past that, maybe 103-ish, 103.50 could be another area of support that we're watching as well. So Best Buy for dips is uh, looking decent, I think. Um, let's take oh, JFU. So JFU is running in the after hours here. Let's take a look. So look at that. So JFU found some support here at that two bucks. And it's been pushing up since. So the question is going to be: Do we break over 250 on JFU? Uh, and if we do, well, that puts us right here. So that's yeah, 250 is going to be a key area. We break over that cleanly, then we got to look to three, three bucks, 325, 350, things like that. Um, that's that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. Um, HOFV. Is one that I like for. I think it's gonna it's gonna get a little it's gonna get a little bounce play recovery. I think it's got some room up. Talk about that one quickly, but I mean, I, I don't. I'm not really worried about taking a large position in that one. Um, uh, really, it's just I'm playing it as a penny play for now, and then eventually I think it has some more potential long term. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. A S A N is one we're gonna look at. Let's take a look at this guy. So. Um, they IPO'd recently. We got, let's see if we can put in a downtrend line right here, kind of-ish, something like that for now. We have, what we have is a channel, it looks like, somewhat of a channel. We can uh, maybe put the channel like this, and we can kind of fix it like that. So you're kind of at the top of this channel right now, so it's a good spot to sell, technically. But really, I mean, I wouldn't say you want to be buying it if it comes down to the bottom of this channel and then if it breaks out. So we want to see this thing breaking back above 24, 25. 25 a break over 25 would confirm a breakout of this downtrend. That's a good sign. That was probably what gets us back up towards potentially 30 bucks. So that's that. Um, GWRS. 
GWRS. Global Water Resources, let's take a step back and see what this chart looks like. So we're up here at 1335. We have ranged in the chart to 15 recently. We have 1420, so it's getting up there. It's, it's honestly getting like that, that area. So personally, it's getting up there for me. I don't know much about it, so uh, I don't know if I'd be buying it up here. And the better dip was down around 10 or under 10. That would have been an amazing dip, personally, right? That could have been you know, a much better entry spot. But uh, we'll see how that goes. So we have Bitcoin holding up here in the after hours today. It looks like we have weed stocks could be on the, on the horizon for sure. I don't like DPW, I think it's coming down. And okay, let's take okay. Nokia. So Nokia, we can get rid of these trend lines because that's a little bit old. Um, I don't know, I mean, it's uptrending nicely. So we had a dip buy here at around 3.30, but it's not a huge range type of chart. I don't know if I like this one really, to be honest with you. Um, I would want to see a bigger break out on the down, in terms of this like downtrend that we have on the daily chart. So get up towards five. That could be interesting, but uh, I'm not a huge fan. I mean, it's definitely a, definitely a discount from where it had been. Um, so if you know more, yeah, I'm not. I don't know as much about it. So I mean, you know, what can I, you know, say honestly? Everyone, you know, you got to do a little bit of your own research to be honest. Uh, and I think that a lot of people, what it comes down to is that, you know, everyone likes to ask for you know advice on this, and that's great. People can, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people who. Who just like generally when I can go like on a support resistance downtrend uptrend stuff, that's helpful. Others like to do it themselves, and others, you know, at the end of the day, I think trusting your own research and due diligence is key. If you start asking too many people or going on stock twits and going on Twitter and getting all these opinions, you know, then you start clouding yourself. You, you throw yourself off, and and then you know you make decisions that you shouldn't have made that you, that you weren't gonna make, but then you make these decisions. And it's like ah, so. Um, LCA is solid. LCA is looking like a breakout play. RKT though, um, RKT is one that I'm in long. I have it in the uh, the long term port, but this guy is kind of just in like a you know up and down kind of range trading. This guy, um, I think it's fine though. So we'll see. LMND. And the lemonade. Oh yeah, this is actually another one too that's I'm pretty interested in this guy. So this has got to get back about 75, and we got a nice little move to the upside. Pretty volatile stock though. Like let's be real here, because we got a range from in the past couple weeks, you know, from July from 96 to 44. So pretty volatile stock, but it's got some, you know, it's getting a little bit of a push here, so it's looking good. I kind of like it if it breaks above 75. I kind of like that. Um. <laughs> So yeah, I like I like it. So we're gonna see like we're seeing. You want you want to be watching and seeing the sectors and, and positioning yourself ahead of the sector, kind of ahead of time. So you know if you start to see things and you're noticing, hey, you know, let's think ahead here. We're gonna see virus cases popping up. You know, get ready, find some plays that you think are good for that, right? So that's that. Um, online school, online shopping, all that stuff. I think. You're gonna see, I mean, into next, into January, you're gonna see that stuff is gonna be big. Online schooling, honestly, um, you know. Seriously, I mean, like, that's just, you're gonna see colleges not going back. You're gonna see all that stuff. You know, why would you, you know, think about it. Why would you have kids, you know, a lot of colleges, you know, they had after Thanksgiving, you know, no, no one's coming back to campus. You're going home, you're staying home, right? Because it's a mess, you're gonna have a mess. So why are you gonna go back for the next semester, right? Why, why are you gonna take kids back and you're gonna have an absolute, you know, mess? I mean, you could try, but. I don't know. Um, I don't do the live streams every single day. I do the live streams every Sunday. And then I call them in when I can um, during the weeks. But they'll stay up. So if you want to go back and scroll through what we've been talking about in the lives, um, you can do so. So that's always an option. You know, they should stay up on their channel. So it's going to be kind of like a video, I guess. It's going to go back up on like a video. Um, so let's look at NVAX. And VAX is starting to make its little uh, maneuver on up. So if we can put in a little bit of, we have this little downtrend kind of right here, breaking out of this downtrend, we have the 50 SMA holding it back. So, okay, this is one that if we break out the 50 SMA, which is at 98.99, this thing could go. So I'd be watching this one actually pretty heavily, um, especially, especially you know, with cases on the rise. I don't know how much uh, NVAX actually really you know matters to... Um, the I'm not sure how affiliated or how 
correlated they are to the virus and stuff like that. But it's definitely one that had run up big time, you know, since, you know, March, right? So, you know, this is one that may get a little push into next week and the week after that. So, check. I do like check. C-H-G-G. So, let's take a look at check. Um, it's It kind of broke out of this little downtrend that we had right here. But if we put in a trend line, boom, we kind of have this little trend line. So it's coming right to this area. So this is actually a decent buy. I like Chegg for that for that reason. So I, I think this is this could be a good play for you know into the end of the year and even next year potentially, um, as we see more you know online schooling stuff going down. I think it's going to have to happen before things get better. So you know that's what's going to happen. NAKD I wouldn't mess with personally. Um, it's a little risky I think. Um, where is NAKD? NAKD naked brand stock 50 SMA is down around 10 or 11 cents so that's a better buy for me if I was going to buy it I would be buying it around 11 cents um, just not now it could come down so hard it could pop back up maybe I don't know people are talking about it but just you know that's that um, and back because of vaccine okay well there you go so APXT This thing is looking solid. Um, Apex Technology works at Microsoft. Could be an underschool, a homeschool, or you know, work at home play as well. So this thing is coming down. It's, I mean, ten bucks is a pretty good spot, I think. Um, you know, as, as close. I mean, as close to ten as you possibly can get. I think is the best play for APXT. Um, oil will keep going a little, but next week is vaccine. But yeah, I mean, I think so. Um, naked is toast. Yeah, not, I mean, naked is not. You, if you were in naked, you got some of that run. Awesome. Just take your money and, and move on. I, that's my recommendation to you. Um, sold Exxon Mobil. Glad to be out of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear you. I don't have any Exxon Mobil now, but it popped. Maybe it goes a little bit more. Maybe it comes back. You're getting the dividend. I'm not sure. I haven't been following it as much lately with them. Um, I was watching it back in here, and then it just kind of fell off. To the downside so uh that is that so now we officially have after hours closed up um so i was trying to bid on on fran a while ago but i didn't get filled because we had the pump we had the little fran let's see where fran finished so my order just got canceled so let's just see finished at 410 so i'm this one could pop tomorrow morning maybe but i mean you had a, a pretty nasty pump from 318 to you know, up two bucks. It's nuts. Um, <laughs> an NDM better check. I think an NDM will be okay for the long term. I think so. Um, oil has been pumping. So one of the stocks I was in, I guess, for that that play, and I sold some. I think I sold most actually today. HUSA popped the two ten. I sold some at two, uh, and then it kind of grinded up. So I think I have a little bit left. And it grinded up, so I felt, okay, let's, let's see what happens. Maybe you get some more, you know, oil pump tomorrow. Uh, and then, you know, we'll see what happens in tomorrow, and, and then we'll go from there. So um, that's what I have there. CEI was one today as well. I think people are going to be watching this one the rest of the week, too. Popped over a dollar pre-market, came back down, broke back over a dollar, grinded up the rest of the day. So I think those a lot of those stocks are looking pretty good. HYLN. And oil, oil is one of those sectors when it comes to like low float penny stocks. Those things are insane. Like when they go, they freaking go. Like those things are nuts. Um, HYLN putting in higher lows. I think it's okay. Um, getting rejected here around 27. So we got a break above 27 and hold above that level. Um, small caps have been going nuts. They've been really moving. They've been really improving in terms of how they've been pretty dead um, lately. But they've been improving pretty good the past couple of weeks. I've noticed especially well end of last well last week, this week especially. Well, today was actually a little slow um, for small caps, I would say. Appreciate I appreciate the donation, Christian. What's been going on with Fisker? Fisker is at let's look at FSR. Um, we're sitting here at 1588 after hours. So what we have, what I've been noticing is we had to have a potential flag. So we have a little support here around 1550-ish area. So that's kind of our, our level right now. We have some also support down towards, yeah, in the in the mid-15s, I think it's a solid area. Um, based on some of these kind of candles right here, 
that were a little highs that we you know had an area of resistance pre-merger, right? Then we fell back through, came back up. That was a tough area to break, right? So we're, we're coming up on 15. We were having a tough time. Boom, we broke above it. Boom, awesome. Now that's an area of support. So we can probably even draw on a horizontal line. I don't want to, we can put in a horizontal line like right in this, this level. It's, it's more of a range. I wouldn't say it's just that specific, you know, exact number of 5, 7, 15, 17. But I want to see that hold and then a, a pop back to the upside. I think we're going to break out of this downtrend um, that we have. And this is a stock that while EVs have been super hot, it's a stock that isn't necessarily perfectly correlating with EVs. Because if this ran with EVs, well, we would have saw a run to 20 plus, but we didn't get that. So I think it's actually a good thing. I don't, I'm not too, too worried. They have a lot. I'm in it long term. I'm invested in the long term. Um, I have, you know, so I have my money in it. It's actually one of my bigger positions in the long term portfolio. Although I'm up good, I'm up a good amount because my average is like 11 something because I, I bought like right here and then I bought some down, I think right here. So I bought some under 10. So that's that. Um, but it's, it's putting in like next legs. So it's stair-stepping its way on up. And I think we may be looking at the next leg soon um, on, uh, on Fisker. So that's, that's, that's my take on Fisker. TSNP, let's take a look at TSNP. Not a three cent stock, not something that I like to trade, but it's been running up. So if we can break above this three cent, three, you know, six, then there you go. This is a pretty good shape where you pop up, find support, break back above. So it can break back above, that looks pretty good. Danbury Road in Wilton, Connecticut. That's actually nuts because I lived, I used to live, if anyone knows, Ridgefield, Connecticut, um, which is like the neighboring town from Wilton. Small, small, I don't live there anymore, but that's where I lived. I, you know, as I grew up there pretty much. Um, IDX, I don't like. I think it's going to come down. Um, absolutely hate day trading. This is the week. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is the week. Um, I, I mean, day trading for me, it's been, it's been like, you know, ups and downs. I like a swing trade focus mindset. And then if I have to take profits, I take profits. Um, no, I don't, I don't look at too many Canadian stocks personally. Um, uh, other the Canadian stocks that I'm person I've looked at it are a lot of these wheat stocks. So you're looking at, you know, SNDL, ACB, uh, Tilray is one, um, Hexo, HEXO. So, you know, CGC, Canopy Growth. These are a bunch of stocks that are, you know, Canadian weed plays. But uh, so CGC finishing the day here after hours 27.59. Do, we, do I smell a gap up? Well, we're breaking above these prior highs that we have with the first weed spike. So that could be interesting for tomorrow. We'll see if weed plays go. Um, that's definitely something I'm going to be watching for sure. IDEX is trash. Uh, that was my take on it. I know there are some people who've looked a little bit further into it, who found some good things. My take is that it's, been, it's trash. And so for something like that, if you're in it, you take your profits quick and you move on. That's how I see it. I don't want to be messing around and holding on that stuff for too long. Um, you know, that's that. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I think we're going to get a, a pretty big bio sector, biopharma. We're going to see a lot of those vaccine-related stocks pump uh, running on up into December, which those are fun because, you know, people hate them, people love them, people hate them, but you can do very well with a lot of those plays. Do you think UABS is on a good trend? Let's take a look at UABS. Um, it's putting in higher lows. It's trying. Um, it's breaking out of this little downtrend right here. So we kind of broke out, popped up, found support here. Popping up again, I want to see it make a new high, or at least a new recent high, right? Not a perfect, um, you know, pop, but uh, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It's got, you know, we'll, I, it's got a pretty strong support here, like two bucks. Got to break back above three. I know for drones, this is a, a, a stock people like. Um, you know, we'll see. We will see uh, on that front. Um, let's see, NCTY is one that I've been watching a decent amount lately but it just kind of popped so i'd be looking for pullbacks but it's also at that 50 sma so we can see a potential bounce here at this 50 sma around 350 if that holds up this could be the next leg to the upside so it's got some range it definitely has some range and it's a china stock so we see a little china continuation tomorrow you know here we go we got you know there's your, your play csiq canadian solar i like this one actually a lot um for the longer a little longer term play but we're up here. We tested this again. We t and this this is the trend line that I had drawn in from a couple days ago. We tested this trend line, this downtrend, and so we got to break above it. We got to break above 41, 42. 
that's our next breakout for the upside for CSIQ. If not, maybe you can hold support around 37, 38, or we come back down towards 36 potentially. You know, we'll see. Um, let's see. What else do we got? Um, Canadian, I think energy sector stocks, let them, let's, those that are up a lot, let them pull back a little bit. And then if they do pull back, then, you know, then that's a good, a, a better spot, I would say, for an entry personally. So, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, let's see. Um, I know people are talking about shippers, shipping stocks. Um, so do I have a list? I have a list actually of shippers. They may go, they may go very soon. And it, it may be quick. I know people hate shippers, people love shippers. There's GLB, I mean, they got range. They have, you know, they could generally get great. If, if things get crazy, they could go. They're super oversold, a lot of these things, so be careful with them. Um, but it's like GLBS is one, tops, GOPS, it popped a little bit today. SHIP is another one. Um, ESCA, CTRM is another one. CTRM, I like it kind of because it's at that 50 SMA bounce, so maybe it holds that 15-ish, 14-ish, mid-14s, maybe. So we'll see. Sunworks. Um, well, let's, let's take a look at Sunworks, I guess. SUNW. So for me, it's not a, I mean, it's, it hit 850, came close again here, got rejected. Now it's coming back down. So personally for me, I would like to see if it comes back down towards five bucks. I, I don't know, maybe it runs tomorrow, but I think we're seeing a rotation a little bit out of the sector for a little bit. We'll see a pullback and then that could be your opportunity to be buying these pullbacks on a lot of these solar EV related kind of hot stocks that have been running up with the EV sector. Um, in general, not that they're all EV stocks, but some of these stocks, you know, um, you know, that's that. So Sun Run, where is Sun? Uh, where is Sun Run? Now my thing is all weird. Sun Run, it's just Run. Oh yeah, I, f I forgot. Look at that. That's looking really good. It's curving back on up. It's making some nice moves. I like Sun Run. Um, also, it's a long-term play. It was a 55, around 55. It was a good dip buy. Um, let's see, DPW, I think it's going to come right back down. I wouldn't be surprised if they drop an offering. Um, ERY, let's take a look at ERY. What do we got for ERY? We got some bare energy ETF. Um, yeah, it's getting hit. <laughs> so these are, are careful, and you got to be careful with some of these because um, a 2X, I wouldn't be swing trading these guys. That's the only thing I would say. Um, so with that said, I think we're going to do, we've been going for about two hours. I'm going to wrap things on up here, guys, really quick, because we went over a bunch of stuff. This video will stay posted here on the channel. So uh, after hours, what do we got? Let's take a look at our after hour where futures are up a little bit here. So that's a good sign. So this will stay posted here on the channel. Um, I'm going to head out. We got Make sure you're tuning in Sunday night, every Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. We do a live stream. Um, just like this, so we're kind of very chill, laid back. We're going over what we're thinking, thoughts, uh, and, and, our, and our, you know, our uh, our plans and what we're look, what we're liking. So um, I'm going to wrap things up here. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you're sticking around. I think tomorrow I'm going to talk. I'm going to make a video on some of these EV stocks. My thoughts on a lot of the ones that ran up. Are they going to come back on down? Uh, things like that. So stay tuned for that. Have a happy and safe Thanksgiving for all you guys. And of course. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.